Hi guys and welcome to part two of uh, finishing a fiberglass surface. As you can see I've been working on the model some. It's really starting to smooth out and look good. Um, this video we're going to get into the, the three main uh, uh, tasks of this process and that's sanding, putting, and priming. Uh, so it would be kind of difficult for me to show you on uh, the whole model here uh, without a whole lot of editing and just to be honest with you I just I'm not a good editor uh, video isn't what I do so uh, what I'm going to do is I've pulled the cow off as you can see hopefully and uh, we're going to work on it and I'll be able to show you all three of those things and how I do it and uh, once again my way is not the way uh, just like everything else in this hobby there are uh, you know ten roads to Rome so uh, be sure and you know, see what other people are doing and, and check it out and kind of find the method that works best for you. But, uh, but I've enjoyed doing this for you. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me on the site uh, or on YouTube. And uh, I guess that's it. So let's get into it and I'll show you some of the, the uh, methods of how I uh, prepare these surfaces. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, as you can see here, I've got the cowl laid out on my workbench, and uh, I've kind of got it zoomed in so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to kind of narrate as I do this. Uh, what's happened is I've sanded this a few times, put some primer on it, and there's a few spots here that are not real smooth. So we're going to put a little putty on those, and and uh, but first we want to kind of see where we need to putty. And I wanted to introduce you guys to a tool I use. I can find the card here. Um, this is what is known as um, dry guide coat. Okay, it's by 3M. Get it to the English side. And the part number here is uh, 05860. And basically what you have here is you have an applicator, which is foam, and it's soft foam, so it goes around contours. And you have a container full of uh, basically fine carbon powder. And all you do is you shake it a little bit, and then we set it down. And then we just take the, uh, the applicator and just kind of smear it over the whole cow here. This is not a uh, not a clean process, so be prepared to get a little dirty. But what we're going to do here is this is going to give us a a guide as to where we need to sand. So let me just kind of wipe off the excess here. Okay, and wipe it off my hand. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another tool of mine that I really enjoy. Uh, this is called the ha Handy Sander, and to be honest with you, I don't know if they still make these, but this was a product by Great Plains that basically goes onto your hand and will bend, and it's a Velcro-based uh, sanding pad, and you can get multiple pad uh, grits. I'm, I've got a little 220 here, so all I'm going to do is start working on this. And see what I can work out. So, if you notice, I started just sanding lightly all over the cow in an attempt to try and see if there's any dark spots. Um, and there's a few already, I see, that we can work on. But I wanted to get this to a point to where you can see it. So you can see exactly what we have to do. So let me work on this just a minute. Now the, the sanding pad, the handy sander, is really nice because it flexes just enough, like our thin foam sanding block, but it covers a lot of area at one time. So it's really good when it comes to, uh, to that part of it. Okay. So I think we've got enough here where I can show this to you. So as you can see, we've got some low spots here on the front. 
that we need to take care of. We've got a few small ones back here on the back that we need to take care of. Now, sometimes uh, spots like this that I'm pointing at, these can usually be sanded out because they're very, very shallow, but then you've got the deeper ones up front that can't be sanded out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a paper towel and we're just going to kind of wipe off the excess here. Maybe wipe it up a little bit so we don't get it all over ourselves. Okay. Now none of these spots are really, really bad, so it's not going to take a lot of putty. So I always keep a block here uh, that I can mix putty on. Let me grab something to mix with here. <clears throat> and I use two types of putty. My preferred one is Bondo. And the reason for this is, is this is readily available. Um, I can use it because of my respiratory problems. I can use it indoors without any issues. Uh, some people say it's heavy, but you know, let's, let's be honest here. You know, you're going to be sanding most of this away, so it's not really an issue. Um, the other one I like to use also is Evercoat Rage, which is a, a nice lightweight filler. Uh, to be honest with you, other than just, you know, there's not that much difference between them. Everybody has their favorite, so whatever you like to use, that's what you should use. Um, the, the great part about Bondo is you can also buy it in one of these smaller packages, okay, or, um, like this. So we're going to mix up a little bit of this, and uh, just be sure to read the directions about how much hardener you need to put to it. I'm not going to put a whole lot because I don't want it to fire off real fast. So we're just going to use a little bit here. Maybe a tad more. There we go. And the thing about this is you want to make sure it's mixed up really, really well. Uh, so, so take your time and get it mixed good. Make sure you get what's on the, the stick, the mixing stick off. Okay, and as you can see, it mixes up pretty, pretty quickly. Now, one thing I want to talk about why I'm doing this is how to apply this. There's lots of ways to apply putty. Obviously, you have uh, all kinds of tools you can use, and, and I'll show you a couple of those real quick here. Um, let me grab them. So you can buy these spreaders like this uh, in packs, and you can also use like a oil uh, painting uh, knife, which is very flexible. That works good for very small spots. But since we've got to kind of cover a large area here, this is kind of too much. I need something a little more flexible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread some on here. Get it here where you can see it. Okay. I'm going to spread it as wide as I need it. And I'm going to put it all right here in this one spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a playing card. And since this is a very, very fine fill job, I'm just going to slowly work it around, spreading and getting it filled. And then I can come back with the excess and hit this other other part of it. Uh, this works really, really well because it, it you know doesn't leave much putty there for you to have to sand. And uh, it gives you a nice smooth surface. Uh, that, that I just can't say anything bad about using a, a playing card for doing this because it works really, really well. Um, so, okay, so we've got this, and uh, I'm going to let that dry and maybe touch up a few other little small spots while we're here. And, uh, and then what will happen is we'll come back, and we'll sand these spots down, 
and get them to where they're very smooth and ready for some primer. So why don't you stick around, go grab a drink, and, uh, and I'm going to finish this up. We'll be back in just a second. Okay guys, welcome back. As you can see, I've, the putty's dried and I've been sanding on it, just working these spots down, smoothing them out. I wanted to talk a little bit about sanding. Um, a lot of people like to do this. They will take a piece of sandpaper and simply fold it up and start sanding like this. Well, you're not really doing anything there because the, what's happening is you're pressing here, here, and here. So you're getting three spots that are uneven and you're not giving a good solid um, pressure on the, uh, on the piece you're doing. This is okay if you need to touch up a little odd spot, you know, something like, you know, right here or right here or one little spot right there. But for doing large surfaces, you want to always use a, a sanding pad like this or something like my handy sander, which I really love this tool. And, of course, we keep it clean on our, uh, our block here. But I'm just going to touch this up some more. And if you notice, I've sanded most of the primer away. There's a good bit left up front, but I really haven't got to that yet. Also notice I'm sanding in a circular motion. This keeps the pressure even all the way around as I come in contact with the surface. causing everything to flatten out. Now, as you can see here, there's a few spots where I've cut through to the glass, and that's okay because I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just letting the sandpaper do all the work, and that's the other thing. Be sure not to grind away pressing hard, um, or you'll cut through the glass. What you want to do is just sand in some light circular motion like this, and just keep, keep the sanding pad or sanding block moving. And, and you'll see it starts really smoothing out here, which is really amazing. This feels like smooth as a baby's butt. It's really, really impressive. So I wanted to show you that. And I'll do it some with the, uh, with the sanding block we made also. I'm not, I'm not pressing down, I'm just letting the sanding block do its thing. And it's actually cutting away that, that putty in, in the high spots and leaving it in the low spots. So as you can see, it's really starting to smooth out. Now, <clears throat> I've got a spot here. I don't know if you can see it. It looks like I'm about to go through the resin there. So I need to be really careful. I'm going to hold this up and let you see that so you can see what it looks like. It starts getting a little rough. And the way that I fix that is I'll just take a little bit of thin CA. Let me do that right now. Let me walk over here and grab some. And if it's a small spot like this, I'll just clean it off and I'll put just a drop on there. Well, maybe I will if I'll uh, unclog the uh, unclog the, the tube here. So you just clean it off. And I just put a little drop or two there. Just enough to wet it. Now I take the paper towel, let it soak in just a second, wipe the excess away, away from the, the putty. And then that, that was it was basically hard again now. Now when we prime it it'll be smooth. So uh, 
I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to do some more sanding here and get this thing all cleaned up and ready to prime and let you look at it. I'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. As you can see, I've been working on the, uh, the cowl and got it sanded down. It's nice and smooth. It's ready to be primed. I want you to note how little of the putty is still left on here that I put on. So see, you're going to actually sand most of that away. Um, you know, while you're sanding, always use your hands to run along and feel uh, to make sure that you don't have any spots. This spot is smoothed out now that I cut through. Uh, obviously, if you've got a bigger spot, like, you know, several inches that... Uh, you get through the glass, you need to re-glass that area, but for tiny spots you can use the thin CA trick. That works really well. Um, so we're going to spray some primer on this and let it set up overnight. And then we're going to come back and take a look at it and see, see how we did. And we're going to talk about the primer a little bit. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, when I'm in this stage of sanding, putting, and priming, and I uh, have to do that several times. I just use Rattle Can Filler Primer. Okay, it's a little thinner than some of the other other uh, fillers primers, but uh, it's it's good enough that it will uh, fill in minor scratches and so forth. Um, Duplicolor, <laughs> believe it or not, Duplicolor is probably one of the least expensive brands here in the U.S and uh, it seems to work the best. Um, I just simply spray it on with uh, several thin coats uh, and then just let it sit up and it, it usually dries in 30 to 30 minutes to an hour depending on the weather and uh, that's it. Then it's ready to sand and uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't clog your uh, sandpaper very much if you're using good sandpaper uh, but I would I would let it sit a couple of hours before you actually uh, uh, try and sand it just to make sure. Uh, you can get this in different colors. Uh, it's just a automotive, you know, foundation filler primer. It uh, works really well. It's very cheap. You can find it at in the U.S. You can find it at Walmart. You can find it in AutoZone. Just about any of any automobile uh, parts store. Um, or any major discount store like Walmart or Kmart or any of those places have it. You can even order it online by the case from Amazon if you like. So, uh, But that's what I use when I'm doing this because that way I don't have to hook up the compressor and, and uh, clean everything up every time I want to put a coat of primer on. I just open the garage door, take it outside, spray it, let it sit for a few minutes, then bring it inside and I'm done. So... Uh, so we're going to go spray this now and uh, we'll let it sit a few hours and we'll come back and take a look at it and let you see what you think. Um, that's, that's pretty much it so far. Um, let's just see how it turns out after, after I uh, prime it, see if I missed anything. But we'll be back uh, as soon as I spray it, so stick around. Okay guys, as you can see, we've got it uh, primed and the primer's dry. Uh, there's a couple little tiny, little, very small spots that I need to, to work on, but for the most part, that's it. Down here where the ribbing was is all smooth. Um, the secret to this is uh, when you're using the canned spray primer, uh, to spray it in several thin coats. Don't try and put it all on in one thick coat because it'll run real bad, but um, also the putty will absorb some of the uh, primer. So you generally always have to go back and hit the putty one more time with primer again too. So just remember if you if you end up using the, uh, the rattle can primer like I do to spray it with a couple of thin coats. You don't have to do it that way obviously, but if you're using that primer, that's what works best. Um, that's about it. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the things to remember, uh, the dry guide coat um, by 3M, uh, the handy sander, the, um, the, uh, basically the, the sanding glove. 
Uh, if, if Great Plains doesn't still make that and if you, you don't see it Tower Hobbies, just look around at woodworking. Uh, there are other brands of it out there, but those work really, really well. And uh, just, just to recap this section, um, you know, always sand very lightly. Never sand with just pieces of sandpaper if possible. Always try and use a, a pad or a sanding block so you get good, even coverage. Um, sand in, you know, it, it, it sand in circles and in directions. Don't do just circles or just directions, uh, single directions. Um, that's really all there is uh, for this section. Uh, we're going to put the cowl back on and see how it looks. I got a little bit more to do on the fuselage. I'm going to try and get it finished up before I do the closing section of this video. But if not, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and do it anyway. But um, I appreciate you watching. I hope you picked up a couple of things. Once again, this is not the only way to do this. This is one of about 50 ways that, that you can accomplish the same thing. So be sure and check out other people's methods and other people's advice. There's a lot of great advice out there on RCSB, and I, I would say to take full advantage of it. Um, I guess I said I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, we'll be right back. Well guys, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I want to thank you for watching the video and uh, and following along on my thread here on RC Scale Builder on um, building the Bates P51A. Um, I want to take a minute and thank Jerry Bates. This is absolutely a wonderful design and I would encourage any, any of you who are uh, wanting to build uh, any of his models to go ahead. That His plans are really good and uh, build up very well. Um, one other thing I wanted to remind you of was the dry dye coat. Don't forget that. That's an awesome tool. Um, and uh, also when you're sanding, be sure to wear a good mask. Um, you know, we, those of us that do this as a hobby, we do a lot of sanding. So uh, you want to protect yourself and make sure you have a good long life. And no respiratory problems so uh, so be sure and, and wear adequate protection and safety glasses or any kind of glasses for that matter will help uh, one more plug I want to give you um, as you notice on this model the the Phillips are not on but they will be soon and, and these are from Vic at Vic RC um, he makes these for this model if you want to check them out he also makes the uh, the cow a fiberglass cow fiberglass fuselage and the, uh, uh, the, the fillet for the tail, which is probably the most difficult part on a P51. Uh, he makes those parts, so those will be going on very soon, and then we're going to detail out the cockpit. Um, and uh, also next, I think, though, we will be marking off the panel lines and, um, and putting rivets on the fuselage and panel lines on the wing. Um, thanks for watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed it. Um, just remember though guys, you, you know, there are, there are 10 different ways to do anything in this hobby. Uh, there's no one single right way. Uh, everyone has their favorite methods. It's, it's kind of up to you to look at everyone's methods and decide what, what works best for you. So be sure and do that. I appreciate you all following my thread on RC Skill Builder and, uh, Heck, I guess that's it. All that's left is the uh, the proverbial cheers. And uh, I'm going to go upstairs and, and take some nice uh, relaxing time after, after working on this fuselage. And we're going to move forward with it over the next couple of weeks. Um, so, uh, so stay tuned to the thread and, and you'll see some, some updates on that. But thanks a lot for watching. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in my thread or you can... Ask me in a comment on, on this YouTube video, uh, whichever you prefer, and we'll, uh, we, we may do another one, I don't know. It, it just uh, it takes a lot of time to do these, even at the basic level I'm doing them, uh, so, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but once again, thanks a lot for watching, as my good friend John Rolfe in Australia says, Uru, have a good one.